It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Two outstanding elementary schools here to play our game today. Let's meet them right now. First, from Perrywood Elementary School, would you please say hello to Robin Green, Victor Akis, and Deborah Adu. And from Scotchtown Hills Elementary School, please say hello to Ishmael Jana, Hayden McWilliams, and Katie Tavetti. And now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with easier questions on the left worth five and 10 points. The tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. We start both teams out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And you tend to the two rounds today. One of these two good looking teams will come back to play our game again and perhaps move on to the semifinals. Let's go over and make sure everything's working properly. Victor, would you try your buzzer for me? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you and to Robin and to Deborah. Hayden, try yours. Green one seems to be working just fine as well. Good luck to you, to Katie, and to Ishmael. Are we ready? Yes. yes. All right. Great to have you guys here today. Let's have a good game. We go alphabetically P before S. So Perrywood and Victor, start the game. Give me a category and a number. Zoo Parade 5. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, you can tell that certain animals don't shave. Goats and wildebeest, for instance, have what kind of facial hair? Perrywood. Beards. Beards, that's right. Those goatees on the goat and uh, bearded wildebeest. Yeah, they don't shave them ever. They're kind of scruffy, don't they? Go red. Victor. Uh, um, green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, because metal is such a precious commodity in Africa, bicycle frames are made of this fast growing grass. No, mm, Hayden. Uh, is it? Uh, what were you thinking? Uh, aluminum. What is it? Aluminum. Not aluminum. Good try. Remember the category green things. Periwood in Africa, metal is a precious commodity. So what they do is they make bicycle frames out of this fast growing grass that is best known as the food of pandas. Bamboo. Bamboo. They make bicycles out of bamboo. Absolutely right. Go red. Um, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, which of Snow White's seven dwarfs is synonymous with the automatic response that you make if you have a tickle in your nose? Periwood. A chew. I don't know that there was a dwarf called a chew. Scotchtown Hills? Scotchtown Hills, who was that dwarf? Sneezy. Sneezy, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, good comeback. You had the right idea, Victor. Go green, you're on the board. Uh, green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, there aren't many professional teams named for plant parts, but one that is, is a National Hockey League team in Canada that has the same name as the plant part that's on the Canadian flag, Scotchtown Hills. Maple leaves. Maple leaves, that's right, the Toronto Maple Leaves. Good for five points, go green. Uh, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, in Central America, there is a lizard called the basilisk lizard, sometimes called the Jesus Christ lizard, because it can walk, even run on water, all because water has very high surface what? Scotchtown Hills. Density. Not density. Good try. Water has very high surface what, which makes it possible for that lizard to walk on top of it. So, salinity. No, good tries both of you. Surface tension, it's called surface tension. The molecules stick together just enough so that the lizard doesn't sink down below. Go green. 
Uh, let's get physical for five. Get physical for five points. Teams, in the nursery rhyme, hey diddle diddle, everybody was amazed when the cow jumped over this celestial body, Scotchtown Hills. The moon. The moon. The cow jumped over the moon. Never did see such a sight. Go green. Uh, Tie score, 65 all. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, cell phones, digital cameras, iPads, they are all possible because they require tin and tungsten and gold, which are all different kinds of chemical what's? Scotch Town Hills. Uh, reactants? Not reactants necessarily. Periwood, tin and gold are different kinds of chemical what's? These are components that are found in a lot of our modern gadgets. Properties? Chemical Properties. elements. Chemical elements or chemical, we also would have taken metals. Chemical elements or metals, either one of those would have been acceptable. Scotchtown Hills, we're still at 65 all. Hayden, please. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, what kind of caustic precipitation with a low pH falls across eastern North America and can kill plants and discolor cars. Scotch Town Hills. Acid rain. Yeah, very good. Caustic precipitation, acid rain. Good answer there. Go, green. Uh, let's get physical for 25. For the big one in that category, let's get physical. Look at the monitor, please, teams. There's a picture with this question. Teams, you're looking at a series. We're going to bring up some pictures of thermometers. Not the normal kind of thermometers. I'll give you 25 points if you can name the Italian scientist who invented a kind of thermometer, but is better known for inventing the telescope. Who was he? Galileo. Galileo. Those are Galileo thermometers. You can buy these in stores now. They're neat to have around the house. They're filled with mineral oil, and the balls go up and down depending on the different temperatures. Try again green. Uh, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, one of the scariest of all horror movies was when Vincent Price and later Jeff Goldblum turned into one of these grown-up maggots. What kind of bug did he become? <coughs> Scotch Town Hills. A fly? The fly, that's right. He turned into a fly, exactly. A grown-up maggot. The maggot is the larval form of the fly. All right, the buzzer is rung. That was a quick round. The score at this first juncture, Perrywood 65, Scotchtown Hills 90. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't you go away. And welcome back. Nice to have you here on Science Bowl today. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. We have six outstanding scholars here from two great schools, Perrywood and Scotchtown Hills. Let's go over and meet them. A couple of them may be familiar to you because they were here last year. Let's go to Perrywood and Victor and Deborah and Robin. Welcome to our program. You're wearing uh, school uniforms partly here today. And uh, your school goes up to the fifth grade. Is that right, Victor? Yes. That's wonderful. And Perrywood is in the central portion of Prince George's County, upper Marlboro area. Who's your principal? Um, Miss Poole. Miss Poole. And you have two sponsors, don't you? Yes. Miss Jones and Miss Shirey. And boy, they have been sending us teams for years and years. They are just outstanding educators, and the school system is very lucky to have them. And I know you appreciate their efforts as well. Victor, did you have an alternate on your program? Yes, his name is Franklin. Franklin. And Franklin will be out in just a few months because he's an integral part of this team. Victor, tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd they pick you to be the captain? Well, everybody just thought I would be best for a captain because you know I could press buzzers fast and I know a lot of questions. Hey boy, those are the prerequisites. Yeah, you're a smart guy and you got quick reflexes. You're in a good seat there. You're doing a nice job thus far. Tell me about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Um, sometimes I read books or I um, know and reading, is, of course, is very good preparation, not only for science ball in school, but for life itself. So I hope you continue to read. And when you get older, what do you want to do? A do be a, I want to be a doctor. A doctor, all right. Yes, uh, you have that look already. I can see you being there with good patient care. Nice to have you on our show. Deborah, nice to have you with us. This young lady sings right now just in the confines of her own home, but you'd like to sing on stage someday. How about American Idol? Can you see yourself doing that someday? No, no way. No, that, maybe that's too big a stage. You have to build up to that. Why did you want to be on our show? Because it gave me a chance to learn more about science and show what I know about science. Wonderful. And I know you've been practicing all year, and uh, we're taping this show after two attempts to do that. Whether 
kept us from doing that, so it's nice that they're here. Boy, you've been preparing for a long time. Glad we can finally do this. Robin, tell us about yourself. What do you want to do someday? I'd like to be an artist one day. Yeah, you told me that you draw animals and plants right now. Do you have some favorites? What are some favorite animals you like to draw? I like to draw ducks and swans and ducklings. Yeah, there's the nice necks and, you know, the feet and everything. So you'd like to be a professional illustrator someday? Yeah, yeah wonderful. And you play soccer as well, don't you, in your spare time? Yeah. Why did you want to be on this show? Because it gave me a chance to learn things I didn't already know about science. Mm. Other yeah. teams to answer. That's right. Yeah, boy, you don't want to get into something where you know everything. It's always nice to have a challenge, so uh, it's nice to have you here. Scotch Town Hills, good to have you guys with us again. Hayden and Katie back for their second year as sixth graders. Ishmael, first time here. Nice to have you on our show. Hayden, start us out. Scotch Town Hills is up there in Laurel. Yep. Who's your principal? Miss Prevos. Oh, wonderful. She's out there rooting for you. And the sponsor of your team, I know, Miss Doris, and you have Miss Taylor here today, yep. too, don't mm -hmm. you? Yes. Boy, have they been working hard, and we've been emailing back and forth trying to make sure this thing happened today, and I know how excited they are. They are great teachers as well. Hayden, tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, I like to play lacrosse and bodyboard. Yeah, that's great. So you're, you're an active guy, and what do you want to do when you get older? I want to be a stockbroker. Stockbroker, that's right, the American way to make money. And uh, I can see you up there on Wall Street. Yeah, and uh, uh, you got to be kind of aggressive. you got to be competitive, and I can see that happening here today. Ishmael, nice to have you with us. You want to be an astronaut, yeah? How did that come about? Well, I got interested in um, things outside of space, I mean, outside of our planet and stuff because I still don't know what happens. Um, I'm, I still know that not everyone knows everything. Boy, isn't that the truth? And not just about space, things right down here on Earth. No one's a know-it-all. Sometimes it thinks when you, when you get into be a teenager, you think you know it all, and then you realize from then on how little you know. Each year you get less and less confident in how much you know. Well, hope you can uh, make good on that someday. What do you do in your spare time now? Nothing. Um, never the same thing. I just relax and stuff. That's right. Hey, listen, enjoy your childhood. Hayden, nice to have uh, you with us as with, as with Ishmael. And Katie, you're welcome. Uh, we welcome you back. You were here last year. Mm -hmm. Tell us the Katie story. What do you want to do someday? You're still not sure, are you? No, I don't know. No, you don't know. And she says that so quickly. And so you must have a lot of things going on in your head. And maybe you'll, you'll have an epiphany someday. You'll watch a TV show or you'll work with somebody. You'll go somewhere. And that'll really uh, trigger your career interest. I know you like to read. What do you like to read? I like to read fiction books. Very good. Okay. Let's get back to our game. Scotch Down Hills 90, Perrywood 65. We've used up the let's get physical questions. Lots of points to give away, though. Last correct answer came from the green team. So, Hayden, start us out. Lions potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, down in Arkansas a few weeks ago, 5,000 blackbirds fell dead from the sky. Some people thought it was lightning that killed them. Hail, maybe fireworks. All those guesses in scientific terms are called what? What do we call those, Scotch Down Hills? Hypotheses? You got that right there. Very, all those different hypotheses. Maybe this did it. Maybe that did it. So they can test it out to see if they can verify them. Go again, Green. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. <laughs> if Honda, the car maker, made a car that was a little bit of the CRV, part of it was the Pilot, and part of it was the Accord, then you'd really have what kind of H initial car? Scotch Town? Hybrid. A hybrid, that's right. We're always talking about hybrid cars. Part gasoline, part electric. Well, that certainly would be a hybrid. Hybrid meaning made up of different parts. Try again. Green. Mine's potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, because bed bugs, everyone's talking about bed bugs, hatch from eggs and then go through five instar or nymph stages before becoming adults, we say that that transformation process is, is incomplete. What? Scotch Town Hills? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, that's right, because it doesn't go egg, larva, pupa, adult. It misses that and just has a long nymph stage there. That is incomplete as opposed to complete metamorphosis. Yes, sir. Go. That's potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25, the big one in that category. Teams, what common analgesic tablet do a lot of people take every day to protect their heart, and now we know it may provide protection against cancer? What common analgesic pill? do people take? Some people every day. 
What do you think, Scott Steinhills? Aspirin? That is exactly right. Aspirin a day keeps the doctor away in maybe more ways than we realized up to this point. Okay. Come on, Victor, let's jump on that. Let me see that trigger finger. Good. All right. Let's jump in there next time. All right. Hayden, you pick one. Dateline science for five. Dateline for five points. Teams. When they were trying to plug that oil well that was leaking in the Gulf of Mexico, they put tires in there, they put golf balls, they put mud, they were throwing everything in. They called it a shot. What kind of J-initialed shot that sounds like garbage? J-initialed, Scotch Town Hills. Junk? Junk. It was a junk shot. Let's throw as much junk in there as we can, see if we can stop that oil from flowing. Okay, Green. Dateline signs for 10. Dateline for 10 points, teams, it was in 2002 in the St St Steven Spielberg movie Minority Report that for the very first time we saw computer screens that didn't need a mouse. All you had to do was what to them and they would work. Scott Steinhills? Touch. Touch them, yeah, like the iPad. All you do is touch them. You don't need a mouse and with a cursor anymore. Okay, go green. Dateline signs for 15. Dateline for 15 points, teams. Matt Super is an amateur physicist who built a nuclear reactor in his own house, making him the 87th amateur physicist to learn how to fuse these together. A nuclear reactor, what did he learn to fuse together? Atoms, atoms, he fused atoms together. Try again, Green. Dateline signs for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Team's a multiple choice question. The newest superfood that's supposed to protect you from cancer is called the acai berry. Is the acai berry an antihistamine, an antibiotic, or an antioxidant? It's the new superfood, periwood. Antibiotic. Antibiotic. Not Bion an antibiotic, no. Is it an antibiotic, an antihistamine, or an antioxidant, the acai berry, that is supposed to be a superfood that will protect you from cancer? Antioxidant. That's the one. A antioxidant. Good. Go. Uh, Dateline science for 25. Dateline for 25. The big one in that category, teams, but this is not good news. The United States is now 23rd in the world in scientific achievement among students. We used to be number one. President Obama says we need to go back 50 years and do what we did when the Russians put what satellite up in space? Scotch Town Hills. Sputnik. Sputnik it was, and that revolutionized American education, especially in science and math. Yes, sir. Thanks for letting us relive history there. Okay, Hayden, go. Green things for 15. Green things, 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. In order to get the DNA out of the cell of a strawberry, you soak it in dishwashing liquid, and that will break down what structure that surrounds the cell, Scotch Town Hills? Cell wall? The cell wall. The cell wall is that tough part. You gotta break it down, and apparently dishwashing liquid will do it. Okay, go green. Uh, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, when a bat visited, visits the flowers of a cactus plant to drink the nectar, it unknowingly going from cactus to cactus is doing what to it? What's it doing to it, Scotch on Hills? Pollinating. It's pollinating, absolutely right. It's taking pollen from one plant to another to another to help the reproductive process continue. All right, boy green, you're on a roll here. Victor, you gotta stop him. You gotta stop him. Come on, girls, you gotta help him. He can't do it on his own. Talk it up. Go, Hayden. For 25. Which one? Green things for 25. Green things for 25. The big one in that category is a multiple choice question. Teams, the famous, the familiar Christmas plant known as the poinsettia with the red bracts on it. It only blooms during very long nights. Is that kind of behavior known as phototropic, photosynthetic, or photoperiodic? Which of those three, Periwood? Phototropic. Not phototropic. Photosynthetic, phototropic, photoperiodic, the behavior that dictates that a poinsettia plant will only bloom during very long nights. Photoperiodic? Photoperiodic, a period, a period of time. That's what we were hoping you would home in on. Yes, sir. Good. Great. Uh, Zooparade for 10. Zooparade for 10 points. Teams, look at the monitor, please, if you would. Teams, this is Angry Birds, probably the most popular cell phone game in America right now. That bird is so angry because what poor sign characters were stealing their eggs? Scotch Town Hills. Pigs? The pigs. The pigs were stealing their eggs, and the birds were getting flown against, thrown against the brick wall there. The 
Yeah, it's it's nasty, but it's fun to play. All right, go green. Zoo parade for 15. Zoo parade for 15 points. Teams, what wriggling, slimy annelids are associated with chaos as when you open up a can of them? Scotchtown Hills. Worms? Worms, a can of worms, a can of worms. Wriggling, slimy little annelids. All right, sir, go. Zoo parade for 20. Zoo parade for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Although they are not remotely bovine in character, dugongs and manatees are sometimes called sea what's. Sea what, Scotchtown? Sea cows. Sea cows, that's right. Bovine being your clue there. Try again. Uh, zoo parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25 points. This is a tough question, teams. The longest animal bone in the world, longest single animal bone in the world, is what bone coming from what animal? What bone and what animal? The longest, even the heaviest. Come on, Victor. Uh, neck bone. Neck bone from? Tyrannosaurus. From a Tyrannosaurus? No. Uh, an animal today now, an animal today, Scotchtown Hills, longest bone, possibly the heaviest bone. What animal? What bone? Uh, the neck of a giraffe. Good try. It was the giraffe, but it was the femur bone, the long leg bone in the giraffe. It's probably one of the heaviest and certainly the longest single bone in the world. All right, we have four questions left. Scotchtown. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points, teams. If you have a lot of really, really good ideas, what meteorological event is said to occur in your head? A brainstorm. A brainstorm is what we're looking for there. Try green. Uh, body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, if you watch the HBO series Walking Dead, you know that you can keep zombies away from you by wearing their entrails around your neck. Entrails is another name for what body parts? Periwood. Intestines? Yeah, your guts. You hang the guts around their neck. All right, you guys came back at the end there. That's what I like to see. Our game is over. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment. Don't you go away. And welcome back to Science Ball. What a game we had here today. It was kind of all Hayden and all Scotchtown Hills. And you know, this game is all down to the trigger finger and who's fastest, but all of our students are great scholars and we are proud of each and every one of them. Our final tally today is Perrywood 80, Scotchtown Hills 325. Scotchtown Hills, congratulations. We're sending you on to the next round. Ishmael and Hayden and Katie and Deirdre waved everybody back there. She's very happy because she's the alternate there. And Miss Doris and Miss Taylor, thank you for all that you did to get the team ready today. I want to see some smiles over here. You were up against some tough competition day. Two kids that had been here earlier, so you knew what you're up against. You did a nice job. Robin and Victor and Deborah and Franklin, our alternate. Nice to have you here today. Miss Jones and Michelle, you guys are great. Thanks for wearing your matching shirts today, too. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye now.